I've just posted a piece about Calvin Robinson, and within minutes, somebody sent me a link to a uh, an opinion piece in the Independent by a person called Michael Corrin, an Anglican priest and an author, who's been on GB News with uh, Calvin Robinson a few times, uh, four times, I think, and the fourth time, they were discussing bubble zones around abortion clinics. And uh, this is particularly after a time that a, a, a an activist had been arrested for praying too close to a clinic. And uh, she had arranged for her actions and her arrest to be filmed. Um, and so it produced a significant amount of publicity. Now, uh, Michael Corrin says that uh, he's always argued that women have a right to access legal medical services without harassment uh, and that prayer was vital. Uh, he's a priest, so he does prayer. Um, and uh, within an hour of his appearance, which went relatively well, he thought, Robinson had written on Twitter uh, to his uh, 235,000 followers that, quote, for a Christian to be pro-abortion and anti-prayer is bad enough. For a priest, it's unfathomable. And then he said, twisting scripture like that is wicked. Judgment waits. I pray he repents. Uh, and Michael has said, this is an outrageous misrepresentation, which certainly seems to be the case. It is quite shocking. Um, this was followed by 48 hours of abuse, he says, libel and threats, to such an extent that Britain's largest evangelical magazine contacted me and expressed outrage at what had been written and asked me to write about it. In other words, even other conservative Christians were shocked by what had happened. Uh, Robinson went on to block him on social media. Um, and uh, he says, I certainly wasn't invited back, and nor would I have agreed to appear on the show again. But it does go to character, as I suppose does his condemnation of Black Lives Matter as, quote, a neo-Marxist, anti-British, anti-family organisation, and his promotion of Enoch Powell's ideas, writing a Substack post entitled, Why Enoch Was Right, and even changing his Twitter banner to a picture of Powell himself. I mean, I, I must say, I didn't know that um, Calvin Robinson had um, espoused the Enoch Powell position. The Enoch Powell position, anyway, I think, was is a um, is a travesty of who Enoch Powell himself was. It's a it, 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 it's like a projection into a fantasy of Powell rather than the reality. Powell was very much himself versed in scripture and uh, was really quite intelligent and always interesting to listen to. Um, but of course, his Rivers of Blood speech was a detestable piece of work and spawned a detestable uh, set of movements. It, um, it, it gave heart to uh, racists and bigots who thought that mainstream politics was embracing their horrific ideas. And I'm afraid one of the reasons why I'm so firm against um, the current Home Office stance is that that too gives credence to uh, the more oppressive um, people on the far right who believe that the Conservative Party has moved to embrace their ideologies. I don't think it has, actually. I don't think it has. I don't think even in her wildest dreams, and we know that Suella Bravman does a lot of dreaming, uh, she has actually moved into a sort of... In, in, in into this post-Powell position. But I think anybody who is reverencing Powell in that way is wrong and I think it's not I, I, I use the term in a very moral sense it is just wrong um, and 
uh, Michael Corrin says, I take no pleasure in anybody's discomfort, but I, I have a feeling that fair debate and the case for Christianity will just be a little healthier now. Then again, as I say, I suspect that we haven't heard the last of Deacon Calvin. No, probably not. Probably not. I think all round it's a very sad story. I think uh, the um, debate about religion on television, as in schools, has rapidly degenerated into a debate about ethics. And there is a place for debating and for discussing uh, the... Uh, the the details of religious life uh, because it informs so many people's lives um, at the moment in Judaism uh, the festival of Sukkot has just finished uh, and uh, and there are various festivals in a variety of um, religious traditions which are coming up and it's not to say that we should be picking and mixing and um, looking at these things as some sort of uh, museum pieces, but I think we should know more about people's religious beliefs and we should appreciate the great variety that we have in this country uh, in religion because it forms such a backbone to our law to our uh, to 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 the arts and to literature and our wider our, our, our wider spiritual lives. Um, so I, th I I I think it's a shame that we don't have this on national television. Uh, what instead we have on national television is something which is sort of a chat about um, a chat about issues. Uh, we, we actually want, I, I, I think it, it's a great, great shame that we don't have a, a Sunday service on a regular basis on a television channel that can be accessed uh, and a Sunday service from different denominations um, and indeed uh, services from different religious traditions uh, on a regular basis. These should be accessible. They, they no longer are. Um, and I, I think that's um, that makes our lives the poorer. <laughs>